Ladies and gentlemen, this is Joe's Classic Video Games back with another cool pinball repair video for you this evening. We have been working on this incredible Williams Black Knight pinball machine. We had a customer bring this to us. He's had it for many, many years. It actually came from Europe, and he brought it back to the United States with him and uh, wanted us to fix it up. So we're working through it. So the first thing we did, in the we did one video before this where we kind of just showed it how the condition that it was in and then we plugged everything up and tested the power we're getting good power on everything uh there was some concern that maybe it was still set up for 220 voltage because it's from europe um, but we discovered that it's actually jumpered correctly for the united states everything's cool uh, but whenever we boot it up it comes up locked up so there is a zero right here on this um led and the two lights lock one next to it now we've turned it on two or three times attempting to check the power actually on the board because we know this is putting out the right power but the board uh, we're not sure that the exact that the right power is getting onto the board but sometimes when you turn it on the thing smokes a chip yeah that's right I said it a chip catches on fire I'm gonna do it again here in a second to see if it does it again I'd like to get it where it doesn't, because last time it wasn't, uh, so that we can check the power on the board. But IC7, right here, it's a 7404, is smoking. Um, we'll talk about why that might be, and then uh, we'll see if we can fix it. So in this video, we're going to work on the CPU and the driver board, okay? So here we go. Look for smoke. See the zero? We're locked on. I don't see smoke. Nope, there's smoke. Mm. All right, so that's the last time we can do that. I can't keep turning the damn thing on. IC7 is freaking fried. So why could that be? Well, sometimes these things can be plugged in wrong. These connectors, okay? There are two big connectors on here that are the exact same size. If you're ever plugging one of these up, you need to make sure that the wires match, not just the color of the connector. So this one is a white one. And there is a big black one. Okay. These are the exact same connector, they're just different colors. If the factory screwed up and put the wrong color on it or something, like just wired it wrong, you could easily plug these in backwards. Or you might just do it not thinking about it. Plug the black one into the white one, the white one into the black one. So anytime you're plugging in a connector, make sure that you've got light colors. So for instance, see this yellow wire obviously connects over here. There's an orange one that connects over there, so that's obviously the right one. If I was to plug this one into it, there's no orange wire, there's no yellow one. So I don't know that that happened, but I'm reading around, I've seen other people suggest that that happened on theirs. So that could be what happened, um, or it could just be that that chip's failed. IC7 is, uh, it's in the memory protect circuit, and um, which has to do with the front door. I wonder if I open the front door if it will not do it. Should we test it one more time to help? You know, the chip's already fried, people. We got the front door open now. Yeah, now it's not doing it. So it very well could be something with the memory protect circuit with the way the front door's wired or something. we got to figure it out, though, before we fry another one. But basically, with that not working, the game won't boot anyway. So we got a bunch of stuff we need to work on. We'll try to track that down. We're going to have to track it down eventually and figure out what in the world uh, is going on. But there's your little bit of action for today. So... Uh, <laughs> First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to check, double check, just to make sure that the memory protect circuit. And what I'm talking about is there is a switch that opens when the door opens. It looks like with that disconnected, you don't get the smoke show. To hell with it. I'm going to connect. I'm going to push it in with my hand and see if that gives us the smoke show. Yep. Okay. All right. Well, now we know. So there's something going on with the uh, with the wiring or that chip or something. So we'll figure that all out. 
but I think it's safe to go ahead and remove the boards because we're obviously going to have to replace that chip. Uh, we need to work on this connector, blah, 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 blah. That, that's where we're starting, folks. Okay, folks, so here's the CPU board. It's actually had a bunch of work done to it. Um, the, the gentleman that brought it to us, I believe he did a bunch of work to it. So it's had the pins connected uh, on the 40 pin interconnect. Um, it's had a bunch of these connected. So the one we're concerned about is this one. And you know, strangely enough, if you look back at the previous board, when I saw this connector, it was it's raised up a little higher than the other ones just because it's a newer connector or whatever. It was just sitting in there a little little higher. And I I saw it and I went, wait a minute, what is that? And I looked at it and I went, oh no, that's fine. But something was telling me that might be it, right? <laughs> For whatever reason, it jumped out to me. Okay, so this is the connector that we're that we're concerned about. Now, what this is is the this connector and this connector connect to the front door, so it controls the test buttons. And that that button on the front that opens when the door opens up, they call that the memory protect switch. I don't even completely know what it does, but basically the way that works is there is a ground, which is pin two on this connector. Now if we look at the back, you can see that pin 2 is directly connected to the ground trace on the board. So that, that ground wire goes through the connector, down through the cabinet, uh, to the coin door, and it runs to that pr protect switch when the door is open that we saw. It runs to that. And then it also runs to the uh, up and down switch. There's a switch that actually says up and down on it. There's an up and down switch on the test and then the, um, I guess the advance button, I think it's called, on the test. Now this is the same setup that they had in the Williams arcade games. So the Defender we were just working on had the exact same setup. But it connects different on Defender because it doesn't use a pinball board. So what's going on is, this is a ground that goes out right here. And then the advance button, I mean, uh, the advance button connects here, and the um, the um, uh, up-down switch connects here, and then the coin door being open, that switch, the memory protect switch, connects here. So if this ground, like this has 5 volts on it, this has 5 volts on it, this has 5 volts on it. Okay? So if this, if any of these are grounded, it grounds a pin on the switch, on the chip that it connects to, and that's how the game knows that that switch has been pressed. Okay, So the one that we're concerned with is the one with the coin door open. So what I figured out was if the coin door is open, the game still doesn't boot, comes up with a zero, and the two lights are on, but this chip doesn't burn up. If I press that switch in, the chip starts burning up. So why would the chip like actually smoke? Like What, what actually causes that? Well, usually it's because you have a voltage connected to ground or you are somehow sending uh, a stray voltage through the chip that's way too high so maybe the chips rated it can handle 10 volts and you send something that's 20 volts through it well it'll make the chip start burning up it's literally catching on fire that's why it was smoking um, so if you look very closely at this chip if I can find it which one is it it's that one, isn't it? No, it's this one. If you look very closely at that chip, there's a little dimple right there. Let me make it brighter so you can see it better. I gotta show you this because it's very, uh, it'll help you fix stuff. Make it bright. Let's brighten it right on up. So it's at 7404, and if we let the light hit it, see just above the end, that crack in the board, in the chip? So that chip is, is messed up. If you see any kind of deformity like that on the chip where it looks like it's melted or cracked or something, that chip's probably fried. Now another clue is this test point here, number three. See how it's all crooked? It's because it's gotten so hot that the little thing started falling out of the board because it was remelting the solder. <laughs> okay, so why did it do that? Well, 
these are the schematics. And the part that we're talking about is right here. This is where the wire comes in. See, it says memory protect. And see, number two is the ground. So the ground wire goes out, and then if that button is pressed, it sends the ground back on this wire. So now this wire is ground. Okay, see the little one there? They're telling you that just to say that it jumps over on the schematics to another place. So it jumps over here because it also co connects to a not connected pin at 1J3 number one. So what does that mean? Well, this is 1J3, and this is pin number one. So they're telling you that pin one also connects to here. And if you look on the back, that is true. Pin one connects to pin one. Okay. Now in the cabinet, there is a plug on here, but the only one with a wire is this one. So this doesn't connect to anything. So our problem is right here. Okay. So you see the line comes down right there. Where's my bent screwdriver? Whoever sent me this bent screwdriver from Germany, boy, that's cool. It's a chip lifter. Only the Germans could invent something like this. It is a screwdriver that's slightly bent. The thing works perfect. Okay, so the ground goes out here. If the button's pressed, it comes back in here. If you were to press the up-down button, the ground would come back in here. If you were to press the advance button, the ground would then be connected to here. So it would make this line, instead of five, a ground. It would make this line, instead of five, a ground. It would make this line instead of five a ground. So that's what's happening. So when I press this in and make this a ground, the chip starts smoking. Well, why would that be? Well, if you follow it, it comes down here boom, 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 to our chip, and it comes in on pin number 13 right there. And we know that because it's here on the schematics. I see seven. This is the chip that's catching on fire. It comes in on pin number 13. Now see this? This is a pull-up resistor. So what it's telling you is that that line will normally, because of the resistor, be tied high. So the line should be 5 volts and then whenever you um, um, whenever you um, um, yeah that resistor by the way is a 47,000 ohm resistor, 47k. So that line is pulled high, and then whenever you ground it, because it's not directly connected to 5 volts, that resistor allows it to go low, right? So that's just how, you know, that's just how uh, ICs work, right? Okay, so why would pin 13 make the whole chip start smoking? Well, whenever I make this a ground, if that pin were somehow shorted to, like, say, 5 volts, when I made that ground, I would be directly connecting ground to 5 volts, which would cause a fire. So what you can do is check this pin and see if it is shorted to 5 volts. Now this doesn't always catch everything, but you can see right here, it's connected to 5, but the only way it's connected is through a resistor that's 47,000 ohms, 47K resistor. So you should not have 5 volts on this. It should not be shorted to 5 volts. However, this is our 5 volt pin. Um, this is going to be hard to do, people, with my... Uh, oh, you know what? The one next to it is 5 volts, too. If I check very carefully... There's only one ohm resistance between pin 13 and 5 volts. Now, why would that be? It's because this thing has cracked, and inside of it, that pin is pretty much shorted to the pin next to it. And so when I plug that in, the ground comes back and shorts straight to 5 volts, and it's like, that's bad. <laughs> that's bad. That ain't how it's supposed to be, people. That's bad. Okay, that's bad. So what else could it be? It could be that pull-up resistor is shorted. So where would it be? It's this one right here. See, that's it. So there's 5 volts, and there's the line coming in. That resistor, if it was shorted, it would do the same thing. But it don't look shorted to me. It looks fine. And we know the chip's bad. So you kind of play this, which came first, the chicken or the egg thing. Did the resistor short, or did the, the chip short, or did something else happen to make it short? Did the chip just fell on its own? Who knows? So how are we going to fix it? Well, I'm going to take the chip out, and then we're going to test the board without the chip in it. 
So if we test the board and pin 13 is still shorted to 5, well, you know, it ain't the chip, it's something else. But we need to get rid of the chip anyway because it's obviously screwed up by this time. But it very well could be that that's the only problem with the board, that that chip just happened to short, and that's that. Now, if you look on the schematics, the chip is used in several places. It's used for that um, memory protect signal that we're talking about. It's used right here in the reset area of the board with a little timer chip and all of that good jazz. Um, it's used over here in the read-write lines and then it's used up here somewhere um, in some kind of thing that uh, enables this chip, the, the 5101 RAM. So it has something to do with the settings and uh, uh, the CMOS uh, RAM, they call it. So, we uh, we will see. Now, speaking of the 5101 RAM, someone has replaced it too. So, we might end up over there messing around as well. But I'm pretty confident that at least that chip, there's a good shot of it, that at least that chip is fried. So we'll pull it out, we'll check the line to see if it's still shorted to 5 volts, and then we'll put a socket in and a new chip. And then we got to do other stuff. Okay, so now if I check between 5 and pin 13, I get 4.63 thousand ohms. 46, uh, 4,630 ohms. Now why? The, the schematic said 47K, right? I think it's yet another typo because this is the original uh, resistor and the one on the pin 4 in the book says 4.7K and that is a 4.7K resistor which is this one and then this one is the exact same thing a 4.7K resistor on this pin so you would think they'd be the same right so either they put both of them in wrong I don't know. I don't know. It's a pull-up resistor. One place in the schematics it says 4.7K, on the other place it says 47K. What am I supposed to do with that? That clearly says 47K. But the one right next to it clearly says 4.7K. I'm going to leave it how it is. Yeah, I think it's fine. Okay, uh, and we're going to put a socket in, and we're going to put in 74, another 7404. And then we've got, uh, we've got to do some more preventative stuff here, and we'll move on. There we go. Nice new chip. We'll leave the, the bent test point as uh, the, uh, the scars it was inflicted with. Right? <laughs> uh, so I'm going to take the ROMs out one at a time and clean the legs, just because they're a little grimy looking so they might not be making great contact in there uh, and then we'll put them back in and then also with the CPU but everything looks pretty good because like I said I think it's already been serviced so a bunch of these connectors have been replaced so obviously it's been serviced um, and I think that'll do that and then we'll mess with the driver board a little bit okay folks so hopefully we're finished with that one one thing about the chip I broke a leg off and I pulled it out one thing, uh, though, I confirmed that pin 13 and this pin, which was tied to 5, were shorted together. So that was definitely the problem, at least. But there, there could be other stuff. I think that's it, though. Uh, another thing I just want to mention is, how did we find the right chip? Because we just turned it on and let it freaking smoke, right? Sometimes that's the only way you can do it. It'd be great if you could figure it all out with a with a scope or something. But sometimes you just got to let it burn, baby. If you've got a monitor, that's very helpful. Now, on these, it's kind of scary to do that because, man, you're thinking the whole time, oh, my God, it's burning up probably 10 other chips at the same time, and then I got to unsight all that stuff. If you've got a monitor that's giving you problems, that's a very valid way to figure out what the hell's going on. Turn on the monitor. If it starts smoking, turn it on and see where the smoke's coming from. And then go look at what the smoke's coming from. And then go look in the schematics and see, okay, it's smoking right here. What else does it connect to? Okay, if it's smoking right here, maybe this is messed up. If it's smoking right here and it's connected to this, maybe this is messed up. 
So sometimes that's just the only way you can fix something is to let it catastrophically fail. Okay, so hopefully that'll do it. Now, that one, the this this is the CPU. There's a couple PIAs here that uh, t talk to the, dis the displays and the soundboard. This is a System 7, by the way. Williams System 7, Black Knight. Uh, and then these are the... Uh, the ROMs, uh, you've got your RAM, where is the RAM? Hmm, oh yeah, there we go. Uses 2114s, hmm. Okay, there's your RAM. Uh, and it also talks to these PIAs, and it wants them to talk back to it. So if this connection between the two boards is messed up, it can't talk to these and it screws you all up. It could be one pin too. Like if this one pin isn't connecting right, the whole thing will not boot because it's trying to talk to this chip and it won't respond back. It can't figure out what's going on or it responds back to the wrong thing or, or whatever. Right? So these PIAs, if any of them are bad, it will make the board block up. And on a System 7, you've got five of them. Uh, and they're 6821s. You can also use a 6820. And a lot of times they're not marked uh, right. They'll have something else on them. So what we're going to do on this is, on the driver board, uh, it looks like it's had some resistors replaced too. Because it says China. And back in the day, nothing came from China. Uh, yeah, they've been replaced. But that's fine. A resistor is a resistor is a resistor. That's not always true, but, you know, in this instance it is. Um, you usually need to re-solder the pins on the edge, but somebody already has. So we don't need to mess with that. Okay. So the only thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and replace these female sides of these. These things get all screwed up. The pin actually pushes through them into the board. Uh, and they get pretty messed up. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to replace them. I've got some here. And I'm also going to clean the pins on these two PIAs that are in sockets here. Just in case they're, um, they've got the same issue where the pins are dirty and they're corroded or whatever. And then we're going to snap it all back together in the machine and hope for the best. And if it's still screwed up, we'll probably have to use a test ROM or something to figure out what's messed up. But uh, let me make sure I've got those uh, connectors and we'll swap them out. So here's the ones that were in it. They just get where they don't they don't make a good contact anymore and they you start getting resistance on the signals and it causes all kinds of problems. So I always put new ones on it. Brand new. Now you might say, where in the world do you get brand new ones? Well you can look around if you figure out the part number. But where we get them is from a place called Great Plains Electronics. He, uh, he kind of caters to pinball and arcade stuff, so he's got all kinds of interesting stuff like this, like the little freaking inner board connector that goes on a Williams System 3 through System 7 driver board that connects to the mail part. Pretty cool! So that's where we get all ours, so you might want to do that. Um, so I'll swap that in and then clean those two chips, and we'll, uh, we'll see. Now while you're at it, while you're perusing the internet, go check out our site. Go to lionsarcade.com. And we've got prices, pictures, descriptions of all of our uh, games for sale up on there. We've also got a parts page uh, where we have um, some of the things that we use in our videos or tools and stuff like that. Links to it. And we have uh, t-shirts and stuff like that with our cool logo on it. So go check that out. I'm going to pop these in and clean these. And then we're ready to put it back in the game. And just test it. Maybe we'll get lucky. All right, folks, so we've got it back in, got the driver board on. I screwed them down, but I didn't hook up anything to the driver board because uh, if, the, if the board is not working properly and it locks on, it can burn up stuff. So we don't want to do any more of that than we've already done with that one chip. See the chip in there? Um, so we're going to go see if it'll boot. The only thing I've got on is the power, and I plugged in the two uh, connectors up there that do the uh, coin door stuff. So we'll see if it boots or if it gives us the same trouble. Hmm. So it came up to O. And then we get a T. Came up to zero. And then we get a T with the top LED on. Hmm. Hmm. I am 
not positive. What that means. I'm trying to go through the test as we speak. See if it'll if it'll reset us. We're basically trying to get it to go into a track mode. It uh, again too. We don't have the displays plugged in. I'm not so sure that I'm even in audit mode. Okay, I'm gonna try the quick on and off method here. T, okay. Off on, zero, off, on. Okay, we definitely got some issues. Uh, if, some, if you don't have batteries in it, what happens is when it comes up, it comes up in audit mode. And so one way you can get through audit mode is sometimes you can just turn it off and right back on real quick and it'll j bump it into audit mode. But uh, we don't have that. It's not doing that. I don't know what the T means, though. We might try to look that up. But basically, whenever it has zeros and the two LEDs on, it's not booting. So, um, oh, I guess we should test our one to see if it's going to burn up that chip, too. Okay, so we're on. I'm going to shut the door switch. We're shut. Everything's cool. Nothing's burning up. Hmm. All right. So our problem with it not booting could very well be that something else got fried in that same section. So uh, what I'll do is we'll I'll get the test ROM and we'll start. Uh, we'll put the test ROM in and start that up. We'll see what happens. Okay, folks. So a bunch of time has went by. We've been working on this thing. I'm pretty positive uh, that someone swapped two of the connectors in the head at some point. So we mentioned that in an earlier video. There's two connectors that are black that are fairly large that have about 36 pins or so on it. And then there are two that are white. And if you accidentally plug one into the other one, they will plug right in, but it fries stuff. Ugh. And I'm pretty positive that that has happened at some point. So I've been trying to track it down. Here's one of the connectors. And here's the other connector. So what happens is the board is sending power through pin 3 of this connector to run um, the coin lockout coil on the front door. Well, if you plug in this connector to it, you're running power in through pin 3. So you're running 28 volts down this which goes through this diode and basically sends a bunch of power to where now all of the coils it causes issues. <laughs> it sends power places it shouldn't be. Um, a coil is just a big length of wire so if there's if there's power on one end of the coil the reason that it doesn't turn on is because it's not grounded on the other side but if you're sending power through this coil and then now all of the coils have power on them if any of these wires connect to the wrong thing because they're plugged into the wrong connector you have big problems so you're sending power down, you're energizing all the coils, and then you have the coils plugged back in to this connector, right? So they all have power on them, and for instance, um, I mean they even have power on both sides, I believe. I think it would have power here, and then through the coil, back down pins 4, 5, 1, 2, 6, all that, which means that you would be sending power, for instance. Um, so look, pin 34, the memory protect. That's the one we were just messing with, right? Well, on here, it is coming off of the flipper. Um, I don't know. I don't know if those would get... Yeah, no, those are separate connectors. 
Yeah, but look, they've got power. So they've got their power. The flippers are powered up. They have power running through the coil. They're just waiting for something to ground them. Well, you plug it in the wrong connector, and now the flipper that has that power on it. Um, where were we just looking? What am I looking at here? Yeah. The flipper that is has power running to one side of it, waiting for the other side to be grounded, is now running what we just fixed. So I think that explains that. It also explains why the same thing was going on on the advance and manual down wires. Same thing. Pins four and five. Okay. Well, we already know that all of this is energized because we plugged the wrong thing in. And then pin four is the other side of this coil that has power running through it. And pin five is the other side of this coil that has power running through it. So we sent 28 volts. We didn't. I didn't do it. Let me just swear right now I didn't do it. <laughs> but at some point it appears that it's happened. Right? So the board has all kinds of failures on it, but I've been fixing it, okay? Another thing that's, that's clever is that if you do that, pins 32 and 33 go to the amp on the soundboard, right? And if you were to have plugged in the wrong one at some point, you would be sending power down pin 32 and pin 33. So that's why the sound amp's not working. Remember how the, the sound has never worked on it since we plugged it up? It's probably got a fried sound amp. We're going to get to that though later. Um, there's also a couple chips on the driver board that it probably got. So that's just one issue. So I've been messing with it. So let me show you where we're at. Okay, we have the test EEPROM, Leon's test EEPROM. I don't believe Leon is with us anymore. I may be wrong about that, but a gentleman wrote this test EEPROM years ago and it worked great. Now the reason that it's so great is because it it's a simple little program that just tells all of the outputs on the on the CPU to to do their thing. So it's just doing this constantly, right? Including this little LED display. Now at first the LED was giving me a zero and then a, a B and a T it, letters and things, which it should never do. It should never give you anything but a number. Zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, or nine. Okay. And so to fix that to where it's giving the zero and then turning off like Leon's test EEPROM is supposed to make it do, I had to replace the 7400 it had the right it had the proper four inputs but one of the outputs was stuck low i didn't film all this because i don't like filming stuff when i'm basically flying in the wind if i don't know what i'm talking about i like to fix it and then i can tell you what worked because if i show you all the stuff that didn't work somebody's gonna watch the video and then do all kinds of crap that they may not have the ability to fix later um so I had to replace that chip. Also, the socket for the EEPROM IC17 was bad. The way you can test that is put a, a uh, multimeter on the pin and then a multimeter on the back and see if there's good connection through the socket. There were two pins that didn't have good connection. So I put a new socket there. Okay. Two of the buffers were bad. I don't think that was from voltage though. I think that was just they died. These things have these old-fashioned buffers on the address lines. Two of them were bad. I swapped the third one just for good measure, and then I swapped the data one, the 245, just for good measure, right? So I put all four of those in sockets. The CPU chip was already in a socket, okay? Then the board was locked up, would not work, because one of the 2114 RAMs were bad. So I put two sockets on it, and uh, on Leon's test run, you don't even need the, the RAM. So I removed all the RAM, uh, and then put them back in, figured out one of them was locking it up. Also, the 5101 was bad, which saves the settings and stuff, okay? Uh, the PIA was fine. I took it, I put it in a socket just to check to make sure, um, but it was fine. 
Moving right along, here's the one that we replaced. Also, IC5 was bad. That was the one that the memory protect, the, the buttons on the door connect to. Okay. Um, and then IC7, uh, one of these up here, I, I replaced two more. One of those was bad, one wasn't. So I've ended up, I've put one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen sockets on the board. Sometimes it gets deep, people, but we now have Leon's test EEPROM up and running. So I'll show you how that works. Basically, it flashes everything on and off, on and off, on and off. And if you hook up your logic probe, you can look at the outputs of the PIA chips and it will tell you, it will just flash up and down. So pin two is one, for instance. Pin three is one. Pin four is low, but it's tied to something else on the board, so I think that's fine. Five, six, seven, eight. And you can just go along through the schematics, and it makes all the outputs go on and off, on and off, on and off. Notice I've got everything unplugged, though, because if you're, if you're uh, doing that in the game and you have everything plugged up, it would be turning all the coils on and then off, all the lamps on and then off. And the lamp strobe, so it would be sending 18 volts to all the lamps and then back off and back on and off. So that would not be a good thing. This is also a good way to, to uh, test the board without the driver board. Because like we were talking about, it needs the PIAs to run the code that are on the driver board. But if you've got the test EEPROM in, all it's doing is just pulsing everything. So it doesn't need the driver board even installed. So it's a good way to make sure that you get your game board up and running uh, without the driver board even connected to it. Now we've got one other problem. When I hit the diagnostic switch here, it should run a RAM test, but it does not run a RAM test because whatever that switch connects to must not work. So for whatever reason, there's just a bunch of bad chips on this board. I think, I think at some point the, the connectors were probably reversed. That might explain some of them, but other ones I think it's just the board hasn't worked in a long time and it just needed some, uh, needed some help. So. We'll, uh, we'll keep working it, and uh, I guess my next thing is I'm going to see how I can get that test uh, switch working. We'll see how that, what makes that do its thing, and uh, once we get the RAM test running where we're pretty confident that the board is working fine, we'll connect the driver board and check all the PIAs on the driver board. Okay, folks, we have a 7400 there underneath the button, which is the one that controls <laughs> the input of the button. And we've got the test EEPROM, EEPROM running. I've swapped the chip. One, two, three, and then back to blanking. So the one, the two, and the three mean that it's testing. Uh, one, two, three, or in some order. So it's saying all of our RAM are good. So that's good, right? So now if I check the blanking signal, it should be pulsing. It's not pulsing. <laughs> also on the PIA, that pin four that I was talking about that's low, it should be flip-flopping. But it's not, it's just low. So what's that mean? I'm glad I'm getting some of this on tape so you guys can see, and girls can see that, uh, yeah, it's been some problems. Okay, so here is pin four. Notice it comes out and it ties to another pin. Now, if you'll remember, we had this same problem on a pinball recently. I think it was on our F14 we were working on, which is a Williams System 11, which is what's left of this, the System 7. They all kind of just turned into each other. And so this line here is low when it should be pulsing up and down, right? And it runs over here to this 555 timer chip, which creates the blanking signal. So the signal is stuck low. This chip ain't doing its thing or it's all shorted or something. So I'm going to pull the board. I'm going to check this 2N4403 and then I'm going to replace the 555. As you probably know, if you're into this kind of stuff, 555s go bad all the time. But... 
we're getting we've replaced about half the chips on the board. So I think maybe the power was plugged in, maybe the five was plugged in where the ground was or something, or uh, maybe we did it when we let it smoke or something. I don't know, but we got issues, people. So uh, this is next on our list. We got to get our blanking signal uh, doing its thing. Okay, so we replaced the 555, but that didn't fix it. So testing it on the board, on the uh, on the uh, uh, ohm test, the resistance test with the meter, pin 4 was shorted dead to ground. So the only other thing that it really connected to was this 74154 that helps run the displays. So swapped in another 74154, and now we've got our blanking signal. There are only seven ICs that I haven't replaced on this board. And one of them I know for a fact works because it's the one that runs that. <laughs> so at least one of these is working. And there was a couple over here that probably didn't need to be replaced. So, yep. so. But you know what? I think we've about got it. There's not really much else for me to check. Um, I guess I need to check this other PIA. Let's see if this one... Let's run through it. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine isn't, but it doesn't. Ten. You heard me. Twelve. Thirteen. Fourteen. Fifteen. 16, 17. 9 has something to do with a dip switch or something. It, it doesn't pulse. Uh, we're looking pretty good. I think that board's done. But I have to put the ROMs back on it, and the sockets for the ROMs might be bad, because that one was. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take it back out yet again. Uh, well, I'm not going to do that yet. Never mind. We're going to put the PI, we're going to put the, uh, the driver board on it. Um, but then I'll have to take this back out and test all of the sockets for the ROMs too. So, you know what that means. Folks, the video is getting a little long. Oh, I forgot to mention that I also rebuilt the 5 volt section and the power supply off camera because I wanted to make sure that it wasn't just... Sometimes if the filter cap hasn't been replaced in forever, or these diodes... By the way, I'm a foot away from it. It just looks like I'm touching it. Ah, optical illusion! Um, sometimes if that filter cap is really old, you get a bunch of AC on the DC voltage. It only uses half-wave rectification. There's only two diodes. There's no bridge. Um, so sometimes you get some AC on the 5-volt the line, and that can cause crazy things, too. The breakthrough on it was whenever I figured out... Um, wait a minute. Oh yeah, that the uh, the LED was giving me weird results because the LED, the chip that drives the LED was screwed up. <laughs> so it was blinking and stuff, but it was saying crazy stuff. I didn't understand why it was doing that. But it seems like we're up and running now. So uh, I'm going to film another video where we, we keep working through it. We do the driver board and then we'll put all of the ROMs back in it and test it and all that. I wish I could have got to it at the end of this video, but mm, take more time than I thought. So... You'll just have to wait till next time. Make sure to give us a thumbs up for taking the trouble to film all this for you. Where else are you going to get this? There's a few guys that do it. God bless them. And uh, leave your comments down below. I uh, hope you've enjoyed it so far. You can check out our website, Lions Arcade, to see all of our games that we have available for sale right now. Arcade games, pinball machines, and jukeboxes. And uh, also check out our parts page on our website. We've got links to some of the stuff we use in our repairs. What's, what's kind of amazing is that I've had all of these chips. That's pretty impressive, but I'm, I'm fairly confident, knock on wood, play field, uh, that we've got it fixed. But uh, the, a lot of the parts that we use in our repairs, you can get on our parts page. There's links to Amazon and things like that. And if you click on a link to Amazon uh, and buy anything on Amazon, even if it's not the stuff that we linked you to, it gives us a little tip. So we appreciate everybody that's been doing that. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And we also have like our t-shirts and merchandise and stuff like that on there as well. So we appreciate everybody that's been buying that. So uh, leave your comments below and we will see you on the next video where we'll 
work on the driver board.